Thanks for tuning in. This is Sandcastle Church, Pastor Bobby Urban, with Andrew Urban leading our worship, and he's going to lead us, which means we all follow, in some praise and worship to the Lord, because he has a word for you today, and you are going to love it. I am not going to step into it until after you have asked the Lord to send his spirit to speak to you directly, because his word is, is validated, it's verified by his spirit who will speak to each of us individually today. So let's invite him in. Let's invite him to have a place in our heart, in our life, today, to speak his word, his wisdom, to us. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to do No Longer Slaves. Uh, this is a good reminder. Uh, it's a song about being free, and for the next hour, and hopefully for most of the next week, we can all free ourselves from the responsibilities, from uh, the things that are not of God, and truly focus on Him. So let's take a moment, take a deep breath, let the worries of the world and the worries that you have right now fade away, and let's go to God in praise and worship. Amen.
Amen. Amen. I tell you, almost every mistake I've made in my life can be drawn back to either pride or fear. When I act in fear, I'm not acting in the confidence of the child of God that I've been called to, and you can walk right into a misstep. Amen. So thank you for that word today, Lord, through your music, that we are your children. And today, God is calling every single one of you, every person who's listening, you are called to be blessed. God is calling you today to step up and step into his blessing. Now, those of you who have watched more than one message at this church know that I am not a prosperity minister. <laughs> I do not preach, go out and sin and be blessed. That's not what I'm saying here today. I'm saying when you step up and you call Jesus your Lord, God calls you his child. Amen. And he wants to bless his children. It's plain and simple. In fact, I love the way that my husband puts it. You think God created marketing. You think God knows how to make something look attractive? I'm going to ask you, does it look like something you want to belong to if you take a vow of poverty and you're always broke, hungry, and starving? That does not sound like a good plan, does it? I don't think that is the God we serve. I think he calls you to be blessed. Amen. To walk in the fullness of who he is, as his children, as his heirs. He wants you to walk in his power, his kingdom, his authority. And today we are going to look at his word, and you're going to get it down deep into your soul, into your spirit, that I am blessed by God. So where can we say that this happens in God's Word? Well, Galatians 3 was brought to my attention last week, and I've been looking and really studying over this all week. On verse 14, Paul writes, He, being, uh, being Jesus and God, redeemed us in order that the blessings given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Well, Paul was writing this book of this letter to the Galatians, and most of them were already were uh, Messianic Jews or Jews that had accepted Christ. So all of they were very familiar with the blessings of Abraham. But there were also people, there were Gentiles like you and I, who've not been not grown up with reading and knowing the Jewish history and what are exactly the blessings of Abraham. So Paul was trying to write this in a manner so that everyone could understand the blessings that God the Father wants to bestow on his children. Does it sound like something you'd like to know? How does God bless you? What blessings does he have planned for your life? Well, today, we're going to step up and start claiming our blessings. Amen? Amen. We all need to walk in the fullness of God's love. And his love is to bless his children. So what is the blessing of the children of Abraham? Those of you, you may have heard of Abraham. In fact, when we claim to worship the one true God, we claim that is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you've heard that, maybe that I worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These are considered the fathers of our Christian religion. This is the same lineage that Christ came from. Jesus can trace his family all the way back to Abraham. Okay? So this is who we claim to be, the children of Abraham. Well, how is it that you can be a child of Abraham, but you're not a Jew? Some of you may be. You may do your DNA and find out that you do have Jewish blood, and you could maybe even be related to Abraham that far back. But what if you have no blood in you that could ever possibly be traced back to Abraham? We still qualify to be children of Abraham. And this is in... Galatians, that Paul explains how this works. 
So in verse 7 through 9, he says, Understand then that those who have faith, and he's talking about faith in Jesus and God, are children of Abraham. So as the Jewish scholar writes, he will make a fact, and then he will, he will flesh this fact out. So Paul is a really good teacher. And we're going to read throughout this chapter in Galatians about how Paul explains how this works. He was a very intelligent man. I'm just saying he, he, he could really look at these scriptures and he had a gifting from the Holy Spirit to understand them. He says, Scripture foresaw that God would justify, to justify means to make right, okay? The Gentiles, everybody who's not a Jew, I'm just going to interpret this as we go, by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. You, can somebody remind me what gospel? What, do, what does he mean, and announce the gospel? What does gospel mean? We've studied this in here. Good news. Good news. So he announced this good news to Abraham before. And God always, you think God had a plan from the beginning? And he announced it to Abraham. So here's where we come to it here in verse uh, 9, I think. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. One way that you would say a descendant, you would say seed, because that was of your body, okay? But this is the seed that the promises were made. He saith, and he's saying God, saith not, and to seeds, meaning more than one, as of many, but as of one. So Paul's pointing out an important part of the Jewish scripture. When God promised to bless Abraham's seed. He didn't say to all your seeds. He could have. The Hebrew language could have said, I have you all, all of your seeds. Everyone that is a descendant. But instead he just said one seed. So he's pointing out God was very straight about this in the beginning. And to thy seed, which is Christ. See, he's saying that the blessings on the descendant of Abraham was actually meant for the blessings through Christ, who is the one seed that is blessed. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before the God in Christ, the law, that which was 430 years after, cannot annul what it should make the promise of none effect. What he's saying here is, is that many of the Jewish people didn't want the followers of Jesus to be part of the promise. Because the law, which, by the way, they're talking about Moses' law, the Ten Commandments, all those precepts that were written down, is what he's saying. That did not come for 400 years after the promise of Abraham. So God promised Abraham a bunch of stuff that we're going to look at, by the way. He did that 400 years before Moses. That says that that promise came first. That promise still stands. The law was written for the Jewish people. Afterwards, the, the, the descendants way afterwards, 400 years. Well, that law does not come above the promise to Abraham's descendants. This works something in my spirit. Do you know, have you ever known somebody who is a Christian who is always condemning people based on the Ten Commandments? And they're saying, but you shouldn't do this, and you shouldn't do that, and you shouldn't do this. That's the law. Even in the very first churches, you had Jewish people trying to make the new believers do everything according to the Ten Commandments and all the Mosaic laws. What Paul is saying here is that is not what's important. What's important is that we have faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, the law really doesn't come over that. The faith is what's important first. You have access to 
to the promise and the blessings of Abraham with simply your faith. Now, we're going to talk about how that works in later messages. But I thought, and God wanted you to know, what are those promises? What are those blessings? What does God promise that we will have? How does God want to bless his children? How does he want to bless you in your life? I'm just praying that God will speak very clearly about the blessings today that he has given you so that you can recognize them in your own life. Genesis, we're going to go back to the original promise. This is what Paul was talking about, by the way. The promises of, to the children or the descendants of Abraham. So we're going to look at the original promise made to Abraham. The original, this is what, this is what Paul was quoting, okay? This is God talking to Abraham. He says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. King David came from Abraham. So you can see how that's been fulfilled, right? By the way, the great nations, that means many different people groups. It can mean many different, uh, not like land masses, but people groups. So he's saying your people are going to be so great, they're going to be their own country. So, and this is God continuing, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants. By the way, in the King James Version is what Paul is quoting, seed. In the King James Version, if you read this verse, it says, me and you and your seed, not seeds, and your seed, Jesus Christ, after you in their generation. So he's saying, look, there's going to be massive generations after that for an everlasting covenant. Covenant. Everlasting means forever. Covenant means agreement. Okay, we have an agreement. God has a promise to you to be God to you and your descendants after you. So the first promise that God makes. And now I want to I want to point out Paul knows this is an everlasting. It doesn't matter that Abraham was over two thousand years ago. He was about two thousand eight hundred years ago. That does not matter. What matters is that it goes on forever. This promise still stands. So we're going to look and and look at this promise, but also the other promises made to Abraham. We're going to look at the very root of this promise number one. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Anybody like fruit? <laughs> Most of the time, being uh, New Testament Christians, we think of the fruit of the Spirit, right? Being fruitful in that way. Fruitful has many different meanings. I will make you make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. To be fruitful can be seen in the Hebrew text that it was written as having lots of children. But it also means that you have what it takes to provide for those children. Don't you know it's not a blessing to have a bunch of kids you can't feed? Mm -hmm. So when God promised to make a nation and to make kings come from, he's actually promising prosperity. This is the fruitfulness that he's promising Abraham. It started, actually, for those of you not fully familiar with Abraham, back in Genesis 12. When, Jesus, when, when God called Abraham out of his home country, and when he called him out, he said, I will make you a great nation. Sound familiar? Make nations from you. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I read this. Make America great again. <laughs> Don't you know that that was originally God? He wants to make you great. He wants to make it so people go, oh, yeah, that, that Kim, I know him. I know her. He's a great guy. He's such a great guy. He wants people to know how wonderful you are. He wants that to go out before you. And how is he going to do this? He wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. So that you can be a blessing to others. 
Now, this is important. It doesn't stop with God blessing you. I am blessed. People ask me, and even if I'm having a hard day, I usually say I'm blessed by the grace of God. But because he blesses me, we are called to bless others. It's a flow-through system that you can be a blessing. Anybody like blessing others? Doesn't it make your day better when you can make somebody else's day better? Well, that's part of the plan. That's why it feels good. It's because you're doing what God wants you to do when you bless others. Now, in Genesis 13, we have an example of how this works. So the next chapter, after 12, we get to see this promise in action. And there are many times that this is demonstrated, but here's just one. Genesis 13, 5 and 6, Lot, by the way, who was the nephew of um, Abraham, who went with him when he was called out, who also went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them. Why was the land not able to support them? That they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. How would you, this is how much God blessed Abraham, and not just Abraham, the nephew. He blessed Abraham's nephew, who was with him so much, that they had so many animals, and livestock, and tents, and people, that the land couldn't hold them all. Would you like to have that much blessing in your life? Would you like to have so much that God's just giving you so much that you're God? I can't, I, you know, I can't contain all this myself. That's how much God wants to bless you. Not just a little bit. He wants to bless you so much that the world around you can't handle it. Are you ready to receive that kind of blessing from the Lord? Are you ready to be so blessed that it flows out from you into those around you? To your, to your neighbors, to your cousins, to your brothers, to your sisters, to your children. That's how much God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you every single day. That is the first promise, to bless you. To make your blessings so good from God that people can't help to know of your goodness as you bless those around you. Now that is a great marketing plan. Can we agree that that's a much better marketing plan than living in poverty? Amen. <laughs> Let's live in God's prosperity. I think that sounds like the God I serve. I'm willing to embrace that promise. Y'all ready to embrace the promise of blessings in your life? Amen. Promise number two. Now, this is a tough one for some people. Genesis, and we're going to go back again to the, the original promise made to Abraham. I will bless those who bless you. I like that. Don't Think about this. Everybody who blesses you with something, wouldn't you love it if God just went, bam, they get a blessing too. When somebody blesses you and you receive it, like, for example, a woman came to my door. She was my neighbor. She came and she had this watermelon and she said, hey, I bought these, it was a fundraiser, and I wanted to give one to all my neighbors. And I, I said, thank you and God bless you. I'm hoping she heard the God bless you part. Because she blessed me with a watermelon. And I'm hoping God blesses her so abundantly that she knows it's him. Amen. You like to bless those who bless you. Here's the flip side of that. I will curse him who curses you. We're not going to talk about a lot of these examples. Genesis 12, at the last part of it that we didn't read, and Genesis 20, both have examples of curses that were given to people who cursed Abraham. Woo! Bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. What this means to me is I don't have to go out and start fighting my battles myself. I let God fight those battles for me. If people are cursing me, I put it before God. So I, and, I, and, and this is how you can handle your own battles in your life. Anybody got someone, someone in your life who is always talking bad about you, lying on you, telling things about you that 
that are, are just absolutely wrong and wishing bad for you in your life? If you do, why don't you claim Abraham's blessing and say, God, these people are cursing me for no reason. I ask you to take care of them. Father, stop the lies that they're saying. Stop the curses that they're sending out. For I only seek to serve you, Lord. You don't have to go fight that battle. We're going to talk more about this when we talk about walking into these blessings and how to claim these blessings in our life. But I just want to tell you that God's here to fight your battles for you. He's here to make sure that you are taken care of. And he says, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Don't you know that with all the Christians, all the people serving God, if we would be a blessing to others, don't you know the whole world would be blessed? We have to embrace our blessings. And ask God to bless those who bless us. Our last message is of being the light. That's how we are the light. Amen. Are you too proud to just admit that it's all from God? That he's the one who's blessing you? That every single thing you have in your life is because God made it happen for you. He opened the door. He blessed you with intellect. He blessed you with strength. If you say, I work to get this. But who gave you the strength? God gave it to you. Let's start thanking him for everything that he's given us in our lives. Calling out that it's his blessing for us. And asking him to find a way to bless others. That's our second promise is that he is going to protect us. Now we have verification that this happened not just in Genesis. But I want to tell you, I came across this psalm of David because I love David. And David had to go through a lot of people cursing him. Don't you know it? Mm -hmm. David was on the run from the king for like 20 years. The king wanted to kill him. You think he was being cursed just a little bit? <laughs> I mean, he was having to walk through this fire and claim the blessings of Abraham. And you know what? He wrote a psalm. And that psalm was not in the book of Psalms. That book, psalm was in 1 Chronicles 16, 20 through 21. And this is how David claim this. This is, what, this is what he said. When they went out from one nation to another, he's singing a song remembering how God protected Abraham, protected the children of God. He says, and from one king to another, he permitted no man to do wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sake, saying, do not touch my anointed ones, and do not my prophets no harm. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. You know what? David was singing a song of thanksgiving. Hey, God, I remember. I'm remembering how the kings were forced to let your anointed ones go. See, it doesn't matter who's persecuting you. They can be congressmen. They can be kings. They can be policemen. Put it before God. Ask for God's blessing. God, this person's, this person's persecuting me. This person's hurting me. Help me, God, be my father. Make it stop. He is your protector, even among kings. It doesn't matter how powerful the people are who are persecuting you. God is here to protect you. And it's time that we embrace our promises. It's time that as brothers and sisters in Christ, as children of God, that we embrace the blessings that he said to his children, the children, the descendants, the seed of Abraham. Don't you know you got to claim it? Don't you know just like an inheritance and there's a will written, you have to stand up and say, yes, I am that child. I accept it. I accept my inheritance. Let's start claiming those promises today. Let's start claiming those promises today that we are blessed by God. God wants to bless you abundantly, so much that you are a blessing to others and that you are fruitful. The things that you do come in, into completion. Ask Him to bless the work of your hands and that you may multiply 
We're going to talk about the multiplication of God. We're going to talk about more of the blessings of God next week. About all the amazing ways that he wants to bless you. And how to actually step into those and, and bring those into your life. But the first one is to embrace that you are promised. And the big one is, is that as you get blessed, I'm telling you the enemy is going to come and try, try to take it from you. With every blessing that we have received, don't you know the enemy comes after it? He wants to take it. He wants to hurt you. So you better step under the protection of God. Amen. You better stop and let him protect you because you don't even see where the, the curses are coming from that people are talking about you. But God sees everything. He knows when someone's trying to do you wrong before you do. We can embrace our promise to be the children of Abraham, the children of God, highly blessed, highly favored, fruitful, and under his protection. The almighty God who created the universe has your back. Amen? Amen. Start claiming it. Start speaking it out. And then next week, Come back. Because if you have any problems with those not manifesting in your life, we're going to talk about how to remove every block of every blessing that might be coming into your life. We're going to talk about how to move the enemy out of your way so that you can receive more. Every single person is going to be a great nation before the Lord. You're walking in his kingdom. You're ushering his kingdom in. And it's time. It's time for his children to stand up. And say that I'm not ashamed to say that I'm blessed by God. Everything through him. Amen? Amen. So let's go to him and thank him today for his blessings. For his mighty blessings. By the way, uh, I guess, yeah, I wanted to share this with our online people today. We, have a, uh, we had a board meeting this morning. And God has really blessed this ministry is blessed all the elders of the church who are faithful to give offerings to the Lord. And we are blessing two different works in Uganda. In Uganda, Africa, y'all. And God has called us to, to give some seed to the people who are working missions there, who are working for God there. If you're interested in working in a nation in Africa, Uganda has put its hand up saying that it is a Christian nation. This is someone we need to bless. We need to bless the nation that claims for, to be for God. Amen? Amen? Don't you know Africa's going through a drought? Uganda is okay, but don't you know we need to make that jewel shine? We need to make Uganda shine. So that all those other, the Muslim nations that are around that are in chaos and turmoil, they can look towards Uganda and say, I want that. I want that God. I want to serve that God. So we are putting some of the seed that God's given us, some of the blessings that he's given us to Uganda to help the children there, to help the unborn in Uganda. So uh, Together Touching Lives is headed by Sheila Weir. She's headed to Uganda next month, and we're going to be sowing into that ministry as a church. And we're going to be sowing into a ministry. One of the members here has has in-laws that are that are, uh, have been pastors in the past. One is still a pastor, and they're fostering children. They're fostering and helping children who, whose parents can't afford to feed them. So we're going to step in as a church. We're going to we're going to give to that work that God can supply for the need. Amen. Amen. If you want more information about this work, please put just a, a comment. Send me information. And I will send you information on that work, so if you want to give to it, too. Because as we are blessed by God, we are called to bless others. Amen? Amen. So I will put that uh, later on, later on today or tomorrow, um, in the, on the uh, description about this message so that you can click on the links and find more information. And if you personally want to get involved, you can personally message me and say, hey, Pastor, how do I, how do I help? How do I bless somebody there in Africa? And we'll share that information. Thank you for joining today. Thank you 
Share with your, your friends, your neighbors, that they are going to be blessed by God through Jesus Christ. We are called to be God's chosen. We are. And you are called to be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.